Elastic properties of solids. Today we're going to study elastic property of solids. Let's look at our picture A, B, and C. Picture A shows a long rod of initial length L0 cross section area capital A. It is under a pair of force capital F. This pair of forces have the same magnitudes but opposite directions. This pair of forces stretch this round rod. Under this pair of forces, the round rod experiences a change of size, delta L, which is increase. Now, our question is, what will affect delta L? Apparently, if we increase the force, and delta L will be larger. On the other hand, if we increase the cross-section area, capital A, then delta L will be smaller under the same force because the thicker the rod under the same force, then it's harder to stretch. If we increase the initial length, initial length is doubled and delta L will be doubled. Our conclusion then is delta L it should be proportional to the force applied to it, proportional to the original length of the rod, and inverse proportional to the cross-section area, capital A. However, we think that the material plays a very important role in determining of the change of size delta L. So therefore, if we want to determine what kind of material that we stretch, we should insert a constant which we name it elastic modulus to balance this equation. The larger the elastic modulus, the harder to stretch. If we change the formula and when elastic modulus comes out as F over A, which is force over the cross-section area A, we name it stress, divided by delta L over L in the show which we name it as strain. Now, stress has the units of Newton per meter square. And strain, on the other hand, has no units because delta L and L0 cancels out. Therefore, the units for elastic modulus capital E is the same as the units for stress, which is Newton per meter square. If we apply a pair of forces according to picture B, then this is a compression. Under the compression, the length of the rod will decrease. And in this case, the delta L indicating the decrease of the length. We have the same conclusion that delta L will be affected by the force we apply, the size of cross-section area, and also its original length, L0. The interesting one is the third one, and we named shear. In this case, a pair of forces of same magnitudes in opposite directions apply to a top and bottom area. In the case that F is within the plane of this area A, I always say the force is parallel to the plane of A. When this happens, the left upper corner shifts a distance. Therefore, we say the shape of the sample changed. The distance of the corner shifted, still defined as delta L. And in this case, in order to identify the special situation that we name this is a shear and the, the elastic modulus related to this case is called shear modulus. Let's define the elasticity in length as Young's modulus and the elasticity in shape as the shear modulus. And there's another case is elasticity in volume, let's define as book modulus. So therefore we have uh, three different modulus. Now, the Young's modulus, which measures the resistance of solid to a change in its length, 
Let's look at a sample problem in our textbook. Sample 12.6. Imagine a cable is used to support an actor as he swings onto the stage. Suppose that the tension of the cable is 940 Newton as the actor reaches the lowest point. What diameter should a 10 meter long steel wire have if we do not want it to stretch more than half a centimeter under these conditions? So this is something about elasticity in length. So we're going to use this Young's modulus equation. Young's modulus equals to stress over strain. And since we're concerned about the diameter of the cable, so if we can solve the cross-section area of the cable first, then we will be able to use that cross-section area equals pi r square for the round shape, and we solve for the radius. So plug in the proper number, which for the force, initial length of the cable, and the Young's modulus for the steel wire is 20 times 10 to the 10 Newton per meter squared. It's very large. And we change the initial, we change the change of the length from the, by giving the half centimeter to meter because we have to use uh, SI units for all the number. And it comes out as 9.4 times 10 to the negative 6 of meter square for the cross-section area. And when we solve the radius, it comes out as 1.7 of mm. Now I want to mention something about units. That starting from the next chapter, when we solve our problem, I recommend do not use um, plugging the units. And whenever you um, plug in a number for an equation, you ask yourself that is this in SI unit? If it's not, please convert it. Also, I want to mention a little bit about a significant figure. In this case, 10 meters, two significant figure, 9 to 40 is three significant figure, and a half centimeter is only one significant figure. In this case, we keep two signal figs as the answer, well, which I consider is okay. Now, let's look at another sample problem from our book. That is sample problem 12.7, squeezing a brass sphere. Since this is related to a volume, then we're going to use, we're going to use the book modulus. Book modulus defined as negative delta P over delta V over V initial. Delta P is the change of pressure. Delta V is change of volume, and V naught is the initial volume. Now imagine if delta P is positive, which means pressure increase, then delta V change of volume will be negative. So this combination is negative. Usually, we like to have a constant, like book modules, as positive. Therefore, we add a negative sign. So the question is about what is the change of the volume if you read sample problem 12.7 because we submerge this brass sphere from the air to the ocean of certain depths. So the volume will decrease. Therefore delta V, if we change the formula, equals to negative V initial times delta P over the book modules. By submitting the proper number and units. The conclusion comes out as this, of 1.6 times 10 to negative 4 of cubic meter. Negative sign means that the volume decreases, delta V. So these two sample problems give us a, a, a taste of what, how do we apply the equation provided this chapter to solve problem. Still, we need to practice more. This is all for today's lecture.